so I did a little digging on the interwebs and um, discovered a few things. Well, first of all, I was digging through the code trying to figure out why in the Adafruit library they were um, trying to um, set pin 4 as a reset pin. And then I realized on the Adafruit um, boards for these um, OLED displays, there there's a reset pin because there's, well, there's a reset pin. I think it's on pin 14 of this header um, coming out here, but on the um, generic boards, they don't break that reset pin out, so you, you don't get to um, reset the chip ever. Eh, fair enough. Um, although, if we really wanted to, we could probably pull that pin out of there and solder, a, yeah, but, yeah, no. Um, I, I, unless I actually need to reset that pin, and then, yeah, well, maybe I'll do that. In any event, um, there's a... Um, I stumbled across a very comprehensive library for dealing with um, LED displays. Um, the U8, sorry, the U8G2 library, and um, it uh, supports a huge host of different um, displays. And so I think I'm going to use that for doing the. Uh, the UI work on this thing. Now, I don't know what kind of a memory impact it has, but at least it doesn't have all of the... Um, uh, it, it seems to be... I don't want to say anything bad about Adafruit. Let me just say that I think I'm going to be using this library for work going forward. Okay, so <clears throat> what do people who are colorblind do? That would be impossible to try and figure out without color, I think. So, push buttons incrementing the uh, button presses, and I've got updating the encoder counts, but I have to do some work on clearing. I have to do some work on clearing off the um, the previous value before printing a new value because of difference in um, lengths of this field. The same thing, well, this is always increasing, so it's, it's always going to get bigger, but this one decreases, so I'm, and you've got this trailing digit is what you end up getting. Okay, so that's much better. In the um, in the loop, you um, just write a, a black rectangle over top of um, the encoder position to um, reset the display, and then you can just wind back, and it'll now have black pixels to draw on. And then you set the um, encoder to uh, yeah, and then button presses. So that part seems to be working all right. So I've got a UI that I can uh, I can use as I add features. Yeah, I guess that's progress. Uh. So I did some rebuilding of this thing, and hopefully that will make it easier to um, maintain. But uh, a unit, and I've got the display there. I've got the uh, Smith Alta altitude jacks over there. Um, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to try and hook up a diff um, I Obviously, I have ice cream C, C working. I'll figure it out. And I can run the test um, script for I squared C on this guy. Just, you know, at least Mosey comes out. Master out, slave in. Uh, you get signals there. What I don't quite um, get is any... I haven't gotten anything to send me data back. So, um, uh, one thing I think I'm going to try, I don't know if I have any other SPI chips that want to send data back, I guess, a spy uh, serial card reader. That might be something to try and interface just to see if I can get response back. And then it would narrow it down to whether or not those encoders, um, through some obviously unintentional abuse of the voltages in on those two components, because, well mistakes were made so I'm not sure if that is actually sending um, any any data back because I already bricked them but anyways 
So yeah, I was thinking I would try and find something else that had an SPI interface that could send data back and probably an SD card makes sense. Um, and uh, I think that's what I'm going to do next. Day two. Oh, hell, that was a bit of an adventure, wasn't it? So, I um, learned a few things. Um, and I'm really not sure where to even begin to explain what sort of happened um, during the last 14 or so hours of debugging my project. Um, long story short, you should never make assumptions about pinouts, even though you wrote the pinouts yourself. You should probably check to make sure that clock and ground on your logic analyzer are actually clock and ground pins that you've got connected up to ground or clock. Just, just saying. That's... One thing that really you need to make uh, make make sure of. Um, the other thing uh, that you need to make sure of is if you're debugging a circuit and you were debugging it using printfs through or print or print line or whatever, if you're debugging it through printfs through the serial port, and you've got another way of of outputting what's happening rather than um, using your printfs, do it. Because then that, that means that you can check whether or not your program's still running properly. Even if your test gear is hooked up incorrectly by looking at it at a display. And that's one of the mistakes that I made. I mean, I should have just written a bit of code to throw up some values onto this display and then I could have checked uh, that the program was actually, you know, the, the power supply is fine. I don't have any weird weirdness because what I was getting was if I had connected the, this guy up through serial to the computer, it was, <clears throat> it was sharing a common ground with this thing. And even though I didn't have the proper pin connected on this thing, the mycelier knockoff logic analyzer, even though I didn't have the ground pin connected, I was getting reliable readings from, uh, from it when it was connected through USB. But when I unplugged USB and plugged it into a power supply or um, plugged it into a battery through USB, the readings would go erratic. And the reason why that was is because I didn't have my ground connected. So there's no reference for the readings to, for, for the readings. So yeah, okay, fair enough. That's all whack. I connect up this guy. Oh wait, no, this, the, uh, the Digilent, the analog discovery two must be isolated. Uh, my, must be isolated ground from the, uh, from the USB power supply. This must be a, a, an isolated, um, ground. The signaling side must be isolated from the computer side because it actually reported back that it, the the signals were actually fine, and so I'm thinking, well, wait, what could possibly be causing that? You know, I mean, hours ago, hours ago, and it took me so long to figure out that I just did not have the proper ground wire on on this guy connected. So um, black is. Um, pin zero and ground is white pin one but anyways that is uh, and in the meantime there was also one other problem that I was trying to debug and that was a little tricky as well and that was having the SPI channel set up incorrectly so I, I, I did actually manage to do something today I ported the uh, the SPI um, or the uh, well actually I didn't get to the AS5048 the Zoetrope Labs but I did put my own code over to an ESP32 using the new ESP32 library and the it's it's almost identical the only thing that you need to do is you need to remember that um, it needs to initialize a pointer 
to the uh, to the object and it accesses the SBI object through a pointer rather than having it um, having it directly in your code. So instead of SPI dot, it's SPI arrow, um, or whatever you call your object that you create, VSPI arrow, and then um, start transaction, end transaction, all of the, you know, um, transfer command, all of that is, is a dereference to the arrow pointer, not the dot pointer. And um, yeah, so instead of enjoying the sunshine, that's what I did all day. Sure, Sadie, just, yeah, that's fine. Anyways, hope you had a, actually I didn't have a bad day, but uh, yeah, lessons learned. Thanks for watching.